some of you eagle-eyed watchers may have realised I did a six-part Halloween series, except for there were only four of the videos uploaded and the reason for that is because my camera is dying. <laughs> um, it's got a problem with uh, writing the memory so sometimes when I'm filming it looks like it's filming in recording um, but it doesn't save to the memory card correctly because it is um, over 10 years old now my camera and it has been my workhorse, so it, it, it is dying. So basically, all the work that I did on my commonplace, um, setting that all up, is gone. Um, and then also the filming I did for the the final video is also gone. Um, so I filmed the bulk of it, and then it's just gone. So there's only like the advent bit left that I didn't record because I sometimes film out of sequence. So what my intention is to do with this video is to sort of have a discussion with you about commonplacing um, and show you how I have set up my commonplace, my spooky, kooky, horrific commonplace, and then show you the last items of what's in the advent calendar because I still haven't undone that. And then also I'm going to throw in a whole bunch of clips and things of what I've been up to during spooky season and sort of have like a autumn wrap up. So it's sort of like a goodbye to autumn, hello winter, vi <laughs> hello winter video. Um, so I'll hopefully be able to stitch something together for you guys to enjoy. Let's see what's in here. Now, I have managed to get door number four. Oh, it's trying to escape again. <laughs> and it was a measuring spoon. It had fallen down there, but the other day when I turned this upside down, it slid back up. Um, so one cup of happiness. Um, so when you've got your loose leaf tea, you just get one scoop of this and that's enough for one person. Um, so did we do door eight? Yep, we did six, seven, nine, we did nine. So, oh, we're on 10. That's where we're at. So in door number 10, we, we have got birthday cake matcha, iced sweet vanilla sponge matcha powder. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's see what color it is. I'm assuming it'll be green with it being matcha. Oh, look at that. I'm correct. <laughs> what a big shock. Um, oh, wow. I just got a whiff of it. It really does smell like um, frosting, like birthday cake um, frosting. So that was 10. Where is 11? 11 is down here. Oi, 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 oi. So this one, we've got bonfire toffee. Oh, it does. It actually smells like a bonfire. Is that just my imagination? But this looks very nice as well. With the little reds and things. And we've got two of those in there. So, yeah, some more tea. Nice, nice to try out. Then, door number 12. Do, 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 do. We've got some more teas. We've got two more. And this one is rose and cardium chai. Oh, it does smell very flowery, does this one. But look at the rose petals in there. Nice, nice, nice. So we've got two of those. And then the last door, door number 13, is a big one. Oi, 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 oi. Which is a spiced pumpkin pie caddy and it seems to be full so that's all of the doors open for the spooky countdown calendar let me just pop that on the floor but look how nice this tin is so spice pumpkin pie we've got beautiful decorations all the way around how to brew and on the top 
a wonderful little illustration. Um, best before the 11th for the second 25. So I've got some time to drink this stuff. And then inside, yeah. So it's a whole loose leaf, no bags, of their pumpkin, pumpkin, spice pumpkin pie. So that's a nice big gift at the end of the advent calendar, which is really nice. So I'm very pleased with that. I'm going to show you what I've done in my spooky, kooky, horrific commonplace and have a little discussion about what commonplacing is or how I understand it anyway. Um, so obviously I got this in the Archer and Olive um, Halloween launch. Um, and it's a beautiful beautiful book they call it a spell book which is slightly fitting so then the first thing I've done which you can't really can you see that on camera you can just a little <laughs> because it's got like a film over the top from where I've used the foil transfer but I've basically extended the design on what was already there onto this um, paper then had to go at foiling myself and then put the spooky kooky horrific commonplace volume one because I'm sure there'll be more of these and the reason why I've done a spooky kooky horrific commonplace is try saying that ten times um, is I want to find out more about Halloween the origins of it because you know I know little bits and bobs from all over the place but I just want to do more of a deep dive into it Plus, I also want a place to put stuff that I see and I like or articles that I want to know about um, or remember. So I just want a, one place for all sort of things that I find spooky, kooky, horrific and just creepy and just all Halloween spooky goodness, you know, in one place. Um, now, I have made a sticker for that to go somewhere where is it gone here it is and that will pop that up but I'm trying to make up my mind whether or not to reprint it because the black is not very black at all and it's basically a mini I've messed with the 3D stuff and took a photo of the spell book and the glass pen, redone it and then added some bits and bobs inspired by Megan Rhiannon's own sticker that she's done. Um, yes, I'll leave a link to Megan's stuff because she does fantastic um, planners, notebooks, commonplacing. Um, I really enjoy her videos and I'm actually one of her patrons as well. So yeah, really huge supporter of Megan. Um, but yeah, that's my first page. Then I'm going to flip straight over. I've stuck those two weird pages together. Sometimes I make a pocket out of them, but this time I haven't. Um, and I've made a contents page. Now, usually on a common place, you have an index first, but I'll show you what I'm doing with my index in a little while. So I'm going to have a contents page, and I've just decorated it how I saw fit. And the other thing I wanted to do with this blackout book is not use white ink. I wanted to use a grey ink and gold and stuff um, and challenge myself to not use white ink because to me white ink's a bit too glaring on the on the blackout don't get me wrong it works beautifully but why would I want to do things the easy way when when, when do I ever do things the easy way huh so <laughs> it's just simply a contents page then from then on I'm then going going to go into my research and my commonplace ink however you flip to the back Boo, we've got Mickey. I just love these stickers. I, I think I got them on like a pumpkin sticker pack thing. Um, there's some more there as well, just from Tesco's. But I just really like this Mickey. Um, so yeah, I just stuck that there because I just like it. And it's just on the pocket. But then, again, I've stuck the pages together at the back. And then we've got my indexing on the back. Now I've done two types of indexing. This index is John Locke's index. He's like the OG of commonplacing. Um, and his method is 
instead of you writing the word your keyword down from whatever research it is you're doing in your commonplace so say if you've got <laughs> all words have just escaped my brain so say if you're commonplacing about uh, dogs so you'll go to D and then where you've got your vowel here O you'll then put the page number so instead of you writing the keyword down you're writing the page number and remembering what your keyword is in sort of how it fits so you've got your first letter then whatever vowel comes after the first letter um, so that's his system but the thing is I'm actually dyslexic so <laughs> this might be quite a tricky way of me doing this but I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could work because it condenses the index to just two pages quite easily um, and I quite like that neat and tidiness about it so I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could do it this way but then the other method is just quite simply having an index of having your letter then writing your keyword that's related to that letter and then the page number and then I've left another block there because it might get quite full um, and then you just do each letter as you would do in an index anyway but obviously this has taken up a few pages so it's taken up six pages six one two three four five pages um so yeah it's quite a big so i wanted to try out both index systems and see how they work for me and then this page is i wanted to sort of use um split up my commonplace as well so this side I'll start working on from like the origins of Halloween and then seeing where it takes me. And then from this side of the book, I'm going to work on discussing different films, whether it's horror films or just like uh, kiddish ones like Casper and stuff like that, that I want to talk about. Because with Casper, I want to sort of deep, deep dive into the architecture of, of Casper more. We know it's all inspired by Gaudi, but I want to... Um, deep dive into it even more because when you break down Gaudi's architecture that's actually um, inspired by skulls and bones and all sorts of creepy stuff so I want to deep dive into that but I knew that would be a section into itself so if I work from this way into the book so then therefore I can sort of organize it a little bit better rather than just having a film in the middle of like the origins or somewhere else so that's how I'm using the um, commonplace book um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to lay out a page and probably fill in a page as well um, because there's margins and stuff like that as well but before I do that I just want to discuss some of the ephemera that I've got so you've heard me mention Megan before Megan Rhiannon she is quite a talented illustrator um, she does these fantastic little gloomies um, there's a whole set of them for all sorts of different things and they are just fantastic little cutesy gloomies to keep your company um, so I really like those she's done ones um, for Halloween so they've all got like, little um, Character, different characters for Halloween as well as a song to accompany them so you can create a playlist which again super cute I really like her illustration style because it's simple but yet it's so detailed but she's simplified the details that it just looks just so clean and so aesthetic to me so I really like those and then of course she's got some stickers see I've kept some of the packaging in the stickers as well so I can use it in my commonplace um, but yeah she's got these stickers as well where I can open the glassine and then she's given me some uh, I forgot what they're called but they're like sprinkles so I can use them in my commonplace as well so these are the Halloween stickers that she did as well and that sticker that commonplace sticker that she's done is basically how i've taken inspiration and done my own and used my own ghosts from the book nook um spirit channel 
um, which there's a link below for if you're interested in what I've got to say about books, <laughs> um, my second channel. Um, so yeah, that's where I've taken inspiration from for, for, for that sticker. Um, but yeah, again, beautiful designs, love her work, love, love, love. So I've got some Megan stuff to use in my commonplace. Then I've also got some bones and blankets stickers somewhere on the blankets yeah these stuff so i've got some really nice stuff as well see i got some moth ones as well because the archer and olive ones came with some moths as well and then some dark academia stuff as well that i thought was quite sh cute and then some more stickers lots and lots of little stickers i think she gave me for free as well just as like little samples but i love them so much um, so yeah I love the pumpkin girl and the waffle maker and stuff very nice indeed so I've got a whole bunch of that stuff that's another copy of my sticker that's just from her then I've also got these stickers because the Woodsboro film club one came from this person as well and i cannot remember for the life of me who it is but at editing me hopefully we'll put on screen who it is um it'll be from an etsy shop probably um and then again these were decal stickers transfer stickers that i've just put on some paper so i can use in the book because if you use these ones on the blackout paper they just disappear because they're translucent um but i really like the play on all the different horror characters we've got from different movies and then the box that that came in i'm basically just using to keep all my ephemera in here so these stamps i love these the orange in the vintage sort of style these have come from west wind and co again exy but beautiful little stamps they're very thin as well so they're not going to really bulk up the planner but the ones i really love are these ghost washi tapes that are almost like a stamp and these are by john turner's illustrations i've got two different types of washies from him he does fantastic ghost illustrations just using pen and ink and they're fantastic of course we've got the archer and olive stuff and then i've got a couple of um sublime um i think she is um from a mossery set from a while ago that i've not used yet but i like the color palette in the sort of witchy elements i've also got some casper stickers if anyone remembers these um we got these free in kellogg's when casper was released this was when I was a very little girl. I barely remember them, but I found them not that, that long ago. So I thought I might use them because I'm going to mention Casper um, in sort of my commonplace somewhere so I can use them as decoration. They glow in the dark too as well. They're quite cool. Then we've got some stamps. I'll save them one for a second. I don't know where I got these from at all. Although, having said that, I think these have come from a Lumicrate box, I think. Perhaps. Again, they've just come from Amazon. They're Archer and Olives. They're also Archer and Olives. I'm not showing these very well, am I? <laughs> yeah. So, they're Archer and Olives. Halloween one from a couple of years ago, I think. And then, these are just Stars and Stripe. Um, moon faces and things. And then this one, uh, when I can pick it up, is a T Tim Holtz collection. We've got bats and the spider webs that I like using on there. Little pumpkin, mummy. I think these were from last year's Halloween collection. But yeah, I quite enjoy using those ones. And then, of course, we've got Archer and Olive's decorative tape from the Halloween box to use. 
So I've got all sorts of bits of ephemera to get me going, filling up my commonplace. But a commonplace, traditionally, you don't have to have ephemera or make it aesthetic. It's, it could just literally be text after text after text. But for me, in my little dyslexic brain, I need visual interest to break up things, um, to keep my mind focused and also just make my heart sing with the beautiful aestheticness, hopefully, that I'm going to create. So I'm now going to fill in um, a couple of these pages just to show you, A, how I'm going to use it going from now on. So I'll put on some music, have a little... Shall I do it real time or should I speed it up? I don't know. Editing me will decide.
So with commonplacing, my intention is to continue with the system that I've got, um, but the more I go on with it, the more it might change. Um, so once I've got like maybe half a book or at least a good 20 pages or something, I'll do another video um, explaining more in depth about the system and how it works, because I'll then have a better understanding myself. Um, this is the first time I've done this, so, you know, this is me just starting. Um, but yeah, I also intend to do another commonplace book for Christmas. But I also will be continuing to do commonplacing within my Hobonichi, um, which I've been doing for the last few months. But this is just like everyday stuff. So it's not like related to a particular theme. Whereas obviously spooky season is one theme and then Christmas will be another one. So those will be my commonplacing, but obviously daily commonplacing will be within the mix of my planner and whatever else I use this for, which is basically a sketchbook in all sorts at this point. Here's some bits and bobs from my life in this time of the year, autumn, and the spooky season. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. So these are all the Halloween goodies and snacks. Um, this one technically isn't a snack because I need to make it yet, but I thought it was just really cool. This was from Morrison's. Um, obviously, you usually get a gingerbread house for Christmas, but they've done a Halloween one. It's the haunted gingerbread house. So we'll have fun making that. Um, we've got some, I call this bat juice, but um, they call it bubbling blackcurrant fizz because they've probably got a whole bunch of things they have to get to, but it's really nice. It's fizzy. And it's basically just fizzy blackcurrant, but it's it's just really nice from m and The other thing from m and is something, it's called something munch. I can't remember if it's scream munch or something like that, but it is so good. Um, I have I got one packet and I noshed it, <laughs> as you do. Um, and I went to go get some more and I, I've been to two different Marks and Spencers and it is gone. Um, and it's basically bits of chocolate um, with Rice Krispies in it and it's bits of popcorn covered in chocolate, it's bits of pretzel, it's got bits of Maltesers in there, it's got all sorts of little bits. I don't know if anyone, especially in the UK, might remember you used to get like um, a broken biscuit box where it was all different types of biscuits that were slightly broken and they were just thrown into one box and they were super cheap to get. It kind of reminds me of that, so it's like all broken bits of pretzel and bits of odd popcorn and all sorts of things all thrown into one, but it is so good. But if they do it again next year, I am definitely stocking up on that stuff because it is so good. But yeah, the other stuff we've got is of course Mr. Kipling's fiendish fancies. No Halloween is complete without those. They are so delicious, but they're very rich. You can only have like one, maybe two if you <laughs> got a really sweet tooth. The other Mr. Kipling thing we got is the terrifying toffee wheels. So these are like Venetian whirls, but they normally have just like raspberry jam and cream in them. But this one, they've got like a toffee sauce and cream. Um, then we've got some little buns, two spooky cupcakes from Morrison's. 
I just thought they were really cute. And then we've got Hotel Chocolates Yumpkin because he's just pure ch chocolate deliciousness. But I just love the detail that Hotel Chocolate go to sometimes. Because I mean, even the swirls engraved, even some of the huh, hashtag and things um, that I didn't even notice until just now. And then obviously white chocolate mixed in. So we'll bite into him. Um, the other hotel chocolate thing I got was this, but someone has already noshed what was in here. And it basically, I had a whole bunch of chocolate yumminess in there. But I just really like the box, so I'm actually going to use this cardboard in probably my common place or something. Um, just a decorative item. Um, the other things I really like are these Soreen screams, um, especially the cherry ones because I'm obsessed with cherry stuff. Um, but yeah, I really like these. These are mi mini loaves, so this is probably the healthiest snack out of the lot, but yeah. Um, the other thing I got is these sour cream Halloween pretzels because I actually prefer pretzels to like crisps or um, popcorn. And obviously got spiders webs and little bats. So they're by Sainsbury's, very nice and Moorish. Then we've got some eyeball gummies. Um, gruesome gummy eyeballs from the co-op. And we've, of course you can't not have some little chocolate eyeballs as well. These are again from the co-op. And then last thing that I like to munch on, these, I think these ones are new. Um, I know they did like bat teeth, um, which were like cheesy, um, like cheese puff sort of things but this year they've they've got those but they've also got freaky Frank frankenstein faces and these are barbecue flavored and they are really nice to munch on as well so yeah a whole bunch of halloween noshingness will be going on while we're watching horror movies Extra spooky ghosts behind the velvet curtains which are individually priced. Once you've chosen your ghost, make sure to get a lovely photo in the photos.
up V. Well, here it goes, bus tours. We believe in you. Neither here nor there, stranger. However, if you want to be pedantic or to turn that side, you can't see. Actually, no, it means what a street. And what a street it is. Believe it or not, it is the smallest street in England. It stretches from that bin. <laughs> This lamppost! <laughs> <laughs> you didn't come here for Whitman or Whatlass, you came here for Gates. So, I'm going to ask you to follow the dodgy man to the dodgy alleyway. You, sir, you're the dodgy man. I think he's talking to you, eh? I'm gentle, follow me. Now, Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and are intrigued to see how my commonplace develops. Um, let me know in the comments below if you guys do keep a commonplace and if it is um, theme related um, to anything in particular. It doesn't have to be Halloween, it could be anything. Um, and just let me know if you guys have found that it has helped you either retain stuff or just for memory keeping or what. Let me know. Let me know how you guys have got on with commonplacing in general. I'd love to know. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.